when night falls on the Isle of Wight, who knows how many fearsome creatures or fabled witches come out of hiding? Is it just folklore and legend, or do ghosts actually exist in the dark recesses of island houses? Well, if you had to walk around the reputed oldest house here on a dark night, you'd have no doubt at all. Imagine, a building that's been around for nearly 2,000 years, that's been everything from a brew house to a mortuary. If ghosts do exist, this place is full of them. Imagine no more, and meet the man who's probably experienced more ghosts than we've had bat soup. The owner of the island's haunted wax museum, Graham Osborne Smith. <laughs> there are plenty of them, I can tell you. When I close up at night, I don't know who runs faster sometimes, you know, the ghost or me. Sometimes he wins and sometimes I win. Is there any one particular ghost? I, I've heard there's a rumour that there's one person who is seen yeah. quite regularly. Well, that's right. That's Louis de Rochefort. He's a legendary character that was said to have been murdered in this house in about 1640-odd, and uh, uh, the legend is that he would remain to haunt the house until his uh, earthly remains were found and returned to his native land. And many years ago, when workmen were digging a water main underneath the house, right where we're standing now, they unearthed a skeleton. Uh, they showed me the bits and pieces, and from my medical knowledge, as I was a medical student, I realized immediately that uh, this was part of a human skeleton. So I phoned up my solicitor and said, we've come across a skeleton underneath the house. He said, well, you'll have to stop work immediately and inform the police. I phoned up the local police, and they were, <laughs> they were a bit dubious, and asked me whether there was any flesh attached to the bones. I said, no. I said, they're mighty old. So, in fact, they didn't show any great interest. I phoned back to my solicitor again. I said, what do I do with these human bones? He said, you've got to inform the coroner, which I did, and a post-mortem was carried out, and blow me, the, these bones were dated back to the 17th century, so undoubtedly this is where this whole legend has uh, been based, and I, I, frankly, I believe it. In fact, we recently had a man came all the way from Australia, a de Rochefort, to trace his ancestors and he was absolutely amazed when he came here and he was he went really white quite white we thought he was going to have a heart attack well you've got one or two displays of louis de rochefort and one or two other people as well we're yep. now going to begin our ghost hunt of the wax museum and uh, we're now going to make our way into one of the oldest parts of the building look steve this is louis de rochefort who presumably was murdered in the house and he was a french spy and he was staying here because it was hoped that he would perhaps help King Charles I escape to France because that's where his wife and his family were. And this is a man that's reputed to haunt the place. Look, Steve, can you see there's someone coming in the door, the supposed murderer? Steve, look, Steve. Steve, why are you... Don't leave me in the dark. Steve. Steve. found a coffin. You know, well, actually, I've looked in the guidebook, Steve, and this is a true story, this girl in this coffin, that's only buried alive. Well, I'm just looking into the display, and there's, a, there's an organist there, and there's a picture of him in the mirror, and the lights just come on, and it's a skeleton. skull. It's a skeleton. Ooh. Let's see what happens, look. The story goes that there was this young girl in Braden, who was only 17, and she was very ill. And then she collapsed into a coma, and the doctor proclaimed her dead, where she was then put in a coffin and left in the church ready to be buried. And one day the verger was walking by, and look, this is what happened. The coffin lid lifted open, and this hand came out. Mm, well, the lid's just lifted up a little bit now, and there's this hand just starting to creep out of the side, and you can see the figure of the girl inside. And this ghostly organist, the skeleton, is still playing away. Well, she was lucky to be found, and, you know, she went on and she lived to the ripe old age of 69. That was pretty old in those days, wasn't it? It was, but did she do well? <laughs> and you got buried alive. Well, myself, Marie and Graham have now come into somewhere which I think is rather eerie and creepy. <laughs> it's the Chamber of Horrors. 
And one of the displays we're in front of now is one of a woman being burnt at the stake. Marie, was this a common form of punishment? Yes, it was, particularly for women, and it wasn't actually repealed up until 1790. And there's probably lots of women, or so-called witches, that were burned at the stake on the island. And the last one mentioned was um, a woman called Agnes Porter from Apley. And she was burned at the stake by the Lord of Apley Manor. And that was in the reign of Elizabeth I in the 17th century. But, Graham, people surely don't come in here for pleasure, do they? They don't, they just, they, they thoroughly enjoy it. You know, it's amazing the school teachers come in and ask us, you know, will they, is it suitable for their children? But, you know, the kiddies write back to us afterwards and say this is the highlight of their holiday. It, it's not too disastrous, you know. It, it's quite incredible, though, about man's inhumanity to man. And here we display it. This is all, again, actual history. I find it depressing, and some of the instruments of torture, that they look really authentic. Well, they are. They're, this is, uh, we show here, part of the very famous, or the world famous, collection from the Royal Castle of Nuremberg in Germany. And these instruments you see here displayed were actually used in the fashion we show them. Well, Graham, you mentioned a lot of other types of means of torture, and you've got a lot more displays here. Let's just go around and take a look at one or two of these, and uh, you can describe them to us. Yes. Well, here we've got the uh, famous whipping wheel. In the 16th century, Henry VIII instituted the Notorious Whipping Act, whereby offenders were tied at the cart's tail or on the wheel and whipped till well blooded. Well, they're being disorientated, really, you see, and then being flogged at the same time. What else have you got around the Chamber of Horrors? Well, here we've got the uh, Iron Spider. This is the ghastly instrument which was used red hot and it was a flesh-tearing instrument. And this one you see here is the only one in the world and that is the famous Iron Spider from the Royal Castle of Nuremberg. And these all have actually been used. Quite hideous, really. we just come back out into the courtyard of the Haunted Osborne Smith Wax Museum. Before we leave this evening, any other little Halloween uh, treats for us? Well, Halloween isn't all ghosts and witches and nasty things. There is a lighter side, and they do say on Halloween night that some young maidens and young fellas, that if they perform certain rituals, their future husbands and wives will be revealed to them. Hmm. Well, what have they got to do for that, then? Well, if you look above you, Steve, we're actually sat under the kissing arch. The kissing arch? What's, what's that? Well, don't you know? Mm, no. Well, let's have a kiss and see what happens, shall we? Ooh. Well, nothing happened for me. Should we go and try the lover's balcony next? There's no stopping her, is there? Marie Allen, Steve Oates and Graham Osborne-Smith touring the haunted wax museum in Brady.